I mean, public art, uh, you know, I, I think like it's such a powerful thing, you know? Uh, a lot of times I feel like people like, uh, I've been asked or like, I even told myself like, uh, even about art altogether, like what makes art? Like what makes it, what makes something to be public art besides just being into the public? Are there any things like in, in your opinion, uh, like uh, is there a definition for public art? I mean, if I make a piece and leave it on Main Street, uh, is that public art or does it have to be signed uh, or like uh, funded by someone to become public art? Like what, what, what would be your opinion? Eliza, what do you think about something like that? Because I've gotten this, this question before. Yeah, it's a great question. And I think, you know, with, at least what we do with Via Partnership, when we do public art master plans with communities, we work with each community to develop their definition of what public art is. Because yes, in general, it means art in the public space, but the field has kind of evolved from just art plopped in public space to, to be a little bit more specific as to what public art is. When most of us refer to public art, we're usually talking about something that is site specific and created for that space. And that's important for a lot of communities. They say, if we're gonna spend our public art funds, if they have a funding source, if we're gonna spend our public art funds, it needs to be site specific and commissioned for this place with this community in mind. Um, and also often there needs to be community involvement in it, either in the selection of the artwork, uh, the process to select the artist, or in uh, community working with the artist to develop the artwork through that process um, once the artist is selected. I think those are two things that are often, you know, put into the definition of public art for specific communities. And also it's not just permanent sculptures and murals. I think most times public art, you just imagine a sculpture or a mural. Um, it can be temporary, it can be ephemeral, it can be event-based, um, it can be social practice. Um, it can be integrated into infrastructure, it can be functional, but I think, you know, it it's often comes back to the process that it was commissioned through and the, um, just the, the way the community is involved, the public, the intent of, of how it's going to interact with public space and the people who use the space. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. You know, I like the fact that you said that it doesn't have to be like something fixed. It could be like perhaps a performance or something like that. Uh, so which leads me to like, it's like, uh, you being a graffiti artist, right? I mean, a lot of times, like, how do you feel about that public art? Like, well, you would do a thing maybe early in the 80s and someone would just paint over and it's like, gone. Yeah, well, I never, I think from my, from my perspective, I never saw it like, um, when I start doing graffiti, I was uh, never planned that I was going to become an artist or what I am right now. So for me, it was just uh, kind of um, use the space that I was in my in my blog or in my in my neighborhood, and and try to be active and and using and take take some space, you know, like because nobody's using it or or nobody's saying nothing. Um, we kind of started doing it, but it, it wasn't a, it wasn't planned. So um, I, I see also like like that part of my 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 life as a as a beginning, like a as a first uh, stage. You know, that's where I kind of start learning what about what it was art. You know, I didn't know what art was. I was start doing graffiti because it was something that it was. Uh, engaging and it was colorful and vibrant and it has a totally different energy that from what we used to see on the wall so um, yeah um, uh, now I see I see it a different in a different way but I see myself in that in that, those times as a as like um, like being in, in 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 school like try to figure out things you know Right. Then it, it was on a super slow and long evolution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As always, right? Uh, that's great. Uh, Patricia, do you have any thoughts on the matter? I don't really have much to add. I think a lot what Eliza what, was saying, what, particularly around yeah. um, what public art is and all that, and yeah. as well as um, I appreciate Seki's um, perspective as an artist and, and working in this, particularly from the graffiti perspective, um, which has had a really interesting um, transition um, over the years from 
uh, being a very street oriented to actually having gallery presence and you know what that, that looks like is really sort of fascinating to see. Um, I think some of the questions that come out of this, this topic of divining public art, um, what I was hearing from Eliza as well is, and something that we try to push nationally, or what I've been doing with my work with Americans for the Arts, is really trying to understand how arts and culture and the implementation of that really impact how public spaces are seen and used and felt. Um, how people walk through a space, do they feel a sense of belonging? Do they feel it's accessible? Where does the artwork play to that or the expression of the visual expression of cultures or perspectives or values or ideas? Um, and where does that fit into, you know, sitting where public space is really accessible? Um, which can then lead off into a separate conversation of what is public space and what does that really mean? Um, who owns public space? How do we activate it? And et cetera. Um, I think a lot of that is also is what's driven to a lot of what we're seeing today. I don't mean to jump ahead of the conversation, but what we've seen today, particularly in response to the monuments and the Confederate monuments, particularly in Columbus and such, about how people feel in spaces and how those representations of their values and their perspectives and, and the histories and whose histories are being um, being uh, uh, highlighted in public spaces through them. So there's a lot of that conversation, I think, about the influence of, of public art or arts in general in public spaces and how it helps define the way people interact and engage with the spaces. You know, that's a great point. And I, I think like, Jamie, from you, like a, from, a, from a fabrication part, like I feel like a lot of the projects that you guys are very permanent, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that is definitely true, but I think as, as Eliza said, you know, the, the definition of what constitutes public art is expanding, you know, every single day. I mean, we could, we could spend the entirety of this, uh, this panel discussion just talking about specific examples of um, public art uh, and the way it has changed and the way different artists are intervening with public spaces. I, you know, I want to touch on something that Patricia just said, because for me, there's one common denominator that, that connects all, all public art and that's it, it's need to be accessible. And Patricia just said that if it's not accessible, if it's not visually accessible, if it's not physically accessible or audibly accessible, it's not public art in my mind. So it can take any shape it wants to, um, but if it's not accessible to, to everyone, um, then in my mind, it's not tr truly public art. Artist Conversations with Industry is made possible because of your support. Please consider donating by visiting our website, www.ocartscouncil.org. Thank you for being part of our arts community here in Orange County, New York.